Welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for March 9th. My name is Mark Ryman. I'm the pastor at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Salisbury, North Carolina. And I want to read to you today from the Holy Bible from the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. I'm going to be reading from the Revised Standard Version. Cain said to Abel, his brother, let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? This is the word of God. Luther writes about that last verse, Am I my brother's keeper, saying, Cain thinks he has made an effectual excuse for himself by saying that he's not his brother's keeper. But does he not confess by the very word brother, which he takes upon his lips, that he ought to be his keeper? Is not that equal to accusing himself? And will not the fact that Abel is nowhere in evidence arouse the suspicion in the minds of his parents that he has been murdered? Just so, also, Adam excuses himself in paradise and lays the blame on Eve. But the excuse of Cain is far more stupid. For while he excuses his sin, he doubles it whereas the frank confession of sin finds mercy and appeases wrath. All liars and hypocrites imitate Cain, their father, by either denying their sin or excusing it. Hence they cannot find pardon for their sins. But let us survey the order in which sins follow each other and increase. First, Cain sins by presumption and unbelief, priding himself on the privilege of his birthright. He takes it for granted that he shall be accepted of God on the ground of his own merit. Upon the pride and self-glorification follow envy and hatred of his brother, whom he sees preferred to himself by an unmistakable sign from heaven. Upon this envy and hatred follow hypocrisy and lying. Though he designs to murder his brother, he accosts him in a friendly manner and thereby throws him off his guard. Hypocrisy is followed by murder. Murder is followed by the excusing of his sin, and the last stage is despair, which is the fall from heaven to hell. Moses took special pains in the preparation of this account to serve as a witness against all hypocrites and as a chronicle containing a graphic description of their character and ire aroused by Satan against God, his word, and the church. It was not enough of this murderer that he killed his brother, but he added the further sin of becoming indignant and wrathful when God inquired of him concerning his brother. He is indignant that he should be called to an account concerning the matter at all. His reply is the language of one who resists and hates God. The big lesson here is being sinners, how to respond to our own sin. What should we do when we sin? What should we do when God, even through our conscience, asks us about that sin, accuses us? Um, we shouldn't be indignant. We shouldn't be bothered that God's bringing it up. We shouldn't be bothered that the Holy Spirit's using our conscience to bring us to account for our sins, but should instead be honest, confess what we did and that we did it, and believe that God, through Christ, because of Christ, will forgive us our sins completely. Let's pray. Lord, help us to not be like Cain, really in any way, but let us not rise to the level of indignation over a challenge to our sins. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thanks a big bunch for joining me today for reading the Word with Luther. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.